Hi, welcome back to that Groovy Scoobcast, your go-to audio hub for all things Scooby-Doo. We're sorry we've had to increase security here lately. Enemy spies? Gold monster. Thank you again for joining us today. My name is Derek. And I'm Shannon. Today we're going to be diving into what's new Scooby-Doo. Today's episode we're reviewing is Gold Paw. Which is probably the shortest title we've had. I mean, aside from like E-I-E-I-O, but I don't count that because it's an acronym. Yeah. So people that are mine and Shannon's ages are probably well familiar with what's new Scooby-Doo. I feel like it was really popular when us two at least were kids. Yeah. You know, it was... I think it was on TV from 2002 to 2004, ran for three seasons. Goldpaw is actually from the third season of the series, but before we get into that, we're always going to begin with our Mystery Machine match, which is our weekly Scooby-Doo trivia challenge. Today's points are standing at me with 18 points and Shannon with 15 points. I always ask you every week, how are you feeling about these questions? I actually haven't looked at my card yet. No. So <laughs> it's going to be a surprise for both of us. All right. Well, as always, Shannon, you can go first. What is the name of Scooby Doo's Las Vegas entertainer cousin? Uh, is it Dixie Doo? No. No? Who is it? Dooby Dooby. I wanted to say it. Wait, Dooby Dooby. Dooby Dooby. I thought it was just Dooby Dooby. Yep. Okay. (laughs) See, you would have gotten it wrong anyway. I would have gotten it wrong either way. I was going to guess Doobie Doo, but I don't know. Dixie Doo seemed like it sounded better to me. You were wrong. I was. All right. Well, here's your first question. Who pulled the magical sword Excalibur out of a rock? Probably Scooby. Is that your final answer? With your face, no. (laughs) I'll let you guess again. Shaggy? No, it was Scooby's nephew, Scrappy. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to assume that was from an episode, like, during the mid-80s we never saw yet. Then I don't care about because it had Scrappy in it. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Shannon, what's your second question? Which friend once had a job as a night watchman in a fortune cookie factory? In a fortune cookie factory? I feel like it would be Shaggy. Yeah. Was it Shaggy? It was. All right. Here is your second question. Which hex girl is 116th Wiccan? Thorn, Dusk, or Luna? Who was the head? I can't tell you that. Because <laughs> that's who it was. <laughs> I think it's Thorn. You're right. It's oh. Thorn. Yep. All right. Shannon, you're that last. That was like genuine excitement that you heard from me. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, your last question. The phony aliens in Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invader were actually people mining what precious metal? Gold. Yeah. I loved that movie. That was like one of my every favorite time I ones get a, as a kid. Every time I get a card with... Alien Invaders. I know you're going to get it. Well, here's another one about Cyber Chase. Oh, okay. A frequent movie we talk about on the Mystery Machine match, evidently. But like one that I haven't really seen yet. So right. Like... <laughs> <laughs> what monster gets spun around and around a merry-go-round in Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase? Do I get options? It doesn't, but I will give you options. Okay. So there was the Creeper, Old Iron Face, the Gator Ghoul, the Tar Monster, and Jaguaro. And I'll even tell you, it was Scooby and Scooby's Cyber Clone that were responsible for the merry-go-round spinning. Old Iron Face? It was Jaguaro. Oh, okay. So Shannon, how do our points end this week? Well, you get 20. Okay. And I get 16. Okay. Wow. Your margin grew again. I know. (laughs) I don't think I'll get there, but maybe I'll get there one day. I'm counting on it. (laughs) You're hoping. (laughs) Well, that concludes this week's Mystery Machine match. You ready to talk about Gold Paw, Shannon? Oh, I am. All right. Well, we'll start off with the premise. This premise of Gold Paw is coming from Scoobypedia. Once again, the gang visits the secret six puppies, but come to discover that a man made of gold is haunting Fort Knox. So what were your general thoughts about this episode, Shannon? Well, so I haven't actually seen a lot from this series. Mm -hmm. As much as it was around as we were kids and everything, like I saw them here or there, but... Did you ever watch like Kids WB as a kid? I did, but it was more like Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? 
that I watched. I don't know if that was on WB. I don't think it was, no. But, like, What's New Scooby-Doo was, I think, originated on Kids WB, as well as uh, Shaggy and Scooby-Doo Get a Clue. Okay. I didn't really watch What's New Scooby-Doo until, like, after its time. Yeah. It was still in the early 2000s that I watched it. Okay. Yeah. So, I wasn't sure who the Secret Six were. Okay. They're really cute. I'm really excited about them. But I liked it. It was a good episode. Okay. I remember this episode being one that I actually enjoyed when I was younger. You know, I really enjoyed the monster, the concept. I liked seeing the Secret Six puppies again because, like I told you last week, they were in a prior episode. Mm -hmm. I think they were only in one other episode. I may be wrong. They could have been in another one. But um, they're cute characters as well. It's nice to see them return. It kind of solidifies a little bit of a continuity in what's new Scooby-Doo, which isn't necessary, I feel like, with this series. Because it's still episodic. You know, the mysteries don't really Connect. extend past the episode at hand. So just to dive right on in, I will say that the entrance of Fort Knox is, like, really heavily guarded, yeah. obviously. It's a military base, I believe. Mm-hmm. You made a comment about it, didn't you? Well, so they pull up, and it says, Welcome to Fort Knox, and it looks really friendly. And, I mean, two seconds later, there's, like, a thousand helicopters and soldiers and everything. So you see, like, the grand entrance. Right. But just that. Welcome to Fort Knox. And I go, and I looked at you and I said, I don't think that's what the entrance looks like. Right. Yeah. You know what? We're going to do a quick Google check. I want to see what it looks like. Because it did interest me. Like, if it if there's really a welcome sign. <laughs> oh, wow. There is. There is. And you know what? It's actually, like, drawn accurately. It has the tank on yeah, it like it was everything. in the episode. Good job, Scooby-Doo. Good job. All right. Well, shortly after we see the you know, the beginning entrance of the fort, we see two soldiers that are inside taking inventory of the gold. Yes. And the gold monster, he doesn't really have, like, a fancy name. No. He's just the gold monster. The gold monster. He pops out of the gold stack, and he touches one of the soldiers, and he instantly turns into a gold statue. And then he goes after the other guy and turns him into one as well. That caught me really off guard coming back to this episode because I, I vaguely remembered it, but... The monster was actually scary. Kind of, yeah. And like, that was my first note, is this monster is actually scary. To describe him to you guys, if you aren't familiar with this episode, there are pictures on Twitter that I've posted. Um, he's just a solid gold man. There's no facial features other than his eyes, and they look menacing. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have a nose or mouth. He doesn't talk. He doesn't growl or anything like that. No, he's just there. The only feature is that I think he, he's just wearing underwear, but like that's it. Yeah. He's just a gold man, and if he touches you, you're going to turn into gold. I liked how simple it was, but... You know, he was still threatening. Yeah. You got to be scared of him coming near you. Like, he was a really easy monster to draw. Mm -hmm. But also, like, his presence was known. I think the simplicity really helped manifest the threat that he was. Because it wasn't really his appearance that was scaring people. It's what he does. Which you don't really see a lot with some of the other villains. Because a lot of the other villains we see in Scooby-Doo, they just growl and they chase you. And they maybe break a few things. But, like, this guy is actually harming people in a way. Yeah. So after that whole cold opening, we see the gang. They're coming to Fort Knox, and they're passing a bunch of businesses that are all gold-themed, which really caught you laughing. Well, because they pull in, and it's just like a whole bunch of gold stuff. You know, oh, gold pop and gold T-shirts. And so Shaggy says something I don't really remember, but Velma's response goes... Well, these are just a bunch of businesses looking to make an easy buck off of unsuspecting tourists. She's not wrong. No, but it just killed me because I was like, that's everything. I didn't actually look that up, like, you know, local businesses that would be near Fort Knox. But but I'm sure they do it. I'm sure they do it, but I don't think they're that close to the base. No, I don't think you could get that close to the base. No. But, like, I'm sure, like, a surrounding town that you have to, like, pass through to get to Fort Knox or something. They probably, yeah. Because it's not like Fort Knox is going to have a gift shop. No. Like, I highly, highly doubt it. Well, that's what Travis Knox has. He has the Knox The Knox gift gift shop. shop. We'll talk about him later. Um, But, no, Shaggy was excited about the Gold Aid factory. Yes. Which is, I guess it's a soda pop company. Like, it kind of felt like it was implied that, like, Gold Aid is sold nationwide, but, like, their home was there. Because Shaggy, like, even when talking to the lady that owns it, was like, oh, we love your soda. Like, they've Mm -hmm. tried it before. They've had it. I wonder what it tastes like. Gold. Ew. (laughs) (laughs) Like, if we had to put a flavor to it, what would you think it would taste like? 
is it like an orange soda? Is it like lemonade? That'd be interesting if it was like lemonade. Like gold aid, lemonade. That might be it. You know, we're going to put a poll on Twitter. I want to know what the listeners think. Anyway, the reason why the gang is going to Fort Knox is because Mr. B, who is their friend, is also friends with the general. So you wouldn't necessarily know Mr. B because you haven't seen other Scooby-Doo episodes from this series before. Mr. B is the owner of the Secret Six's mom. And he basically is in charge of all the puppies as well. Now, the funny thing about Mr. B, which I pointed out to you, I don't know if you really caught on to it before I made the comment, was that he resembles Joseph Barbera, one of the co-founders of the company that made Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Um, So I thought that was kind of a cool Easter egg right there. It was really subtle, you know. But anyway, anyway, Mr. B is friends with the general. Yes. And he invited the gang to come see Fort Knox, which is pretty cool. You don't show up to Fort Knox without a pass. No, and Fred made that mistake. When they get there, the military find that he doesn't have any kind of clearance, so they tear apart the mystery machine. I mean, they took the doors off, the back doors, like everything. At least 20 men surrounded the van instantly and just tore off the doors. They pulled everybody out of the van. They're like, we got to check. I don't know what you kids are doing, but we know that you're involved in gang activity with the Art Swindlers gang. That's what it was. I don't know. Can we talk about Scooby's in case of an emergency box? It looks like a bomb. And it it's so it just says snack on it. Yeah. So to explain, so while the gang is being x-rayed and everything, the soldiers take the mystery machine and they like crane lift it. yeah, they crane it and they're looking at the bottom just to inspect and Scooby's in case of emergency Scooby snack box is taped to the bottom of the van and just it's so simple it, like you said it only says snacks on it that could be a bomb like it looks like a bomb and Shaggy at least goes so that's where you keep your in case of emergency box and Scooby's like ha, ha, ha. which implies that Scooby talks about it yeah and Shaggy doesn't know where it is no one knows where it is which is rude right that was just I thought it was really funny <laughs> no, that was a great moment. Because both of us just said, that looks like a bomb. Right. So then Mr. B and the general like come up and they're like, oh, hey, we know you guys because everyone here shaves their head. That's what Mr. B said, yeah. He's, he seems like a really goofy guy, which I can kind of see Joseph Barbera yeah. being like, so it makes sense. So Mr. B introduces them to the general. The general orders the soldier to give the gang their almost all access passes. It literally says that on the pass, almost all access pass. It basically gets into almost everywhere on the base. Well, and then (laughs) when they go to the gold room to try to open it, and Shaggy's like, why isn't this working? And he looks, and that's when we realized it says almost all access. And he's like, oh, man. I mean, they said that at the beginning, so we knew what it was. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he just wasn't paying attention. But the thing is, the gold room is evidently the only place in the entire base that they don't have access to. Because it seems like they have access to every other place on the base. I mean, they're able to steal a helicopter, get in the secret room. Like, I mean, they can get everywhere, do anything. It does not matter. It was wild. So the general tells the gang to brace themselves because there's these military tests that are going on. There's like an explosion in the background. And, you know, the gang are like, oh, wow, that's crazy. How does any of the business get their stuff done? And Velma's like, you wouldn't even be able to hear them if they were trying, they to, were trying to. Which was a nice form of foreshadowing, for one. That was like one of the first times, at least we've noticed, foreshadowing in Scooby-Doo. Nice writing. Well done, writers. Good job. <laughs> Um, so then the general's like, I'm sorry that we had to heighten our security here. And that's when Fred was just like, enemy, enemy spies? spies? And this isn't the first time they've dealt with enemy spies before. Because remember in A Scary Duel with a cartoon yeah. ghoul with the enemy spy? He was an enemy agent. Yep. And he was stealing that rocket film. Maybe it's the same kind of agents. Maybe. It could be. But it turns out it's just, just a gold monster. Just a gold monster. <laughs> No big deal. We were we had to pause. We had to pause that episode right at that moment, and we both just died were laughing because of the way he just says it so casually. Just gold, gold monster. monster, like it happens. It happens. 
You hear it on the news every day. Yeah, and, like, it's just another gold monster. No big deal. Yesterday I was hearing about a gold monster attacking this lady in Detroit. Like, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so then we meet the Secret Six. Yeah, so what were your thoughts on them? Um, I literally wrote down, the Secret Six make Scooby-Doo, the talking dog, look like shit. How do you mean? Okay, so they come out. I'm sorry. I loved that little, um, I don't even remember what he said. Oh, when they were doing the march? Yeah. Oh, he was just like. He's like. We are. You know, but it was along lines of like. We're in, I think he said, we're in the army. We work hard. And then they do the bark. Exactly. And then he says, we don't pee in the neighbor's yard. (laughs) (laughs) Like that was the cutest thing ever. (laughs) Then they do like this little baton thing with these bones. Well, because that is something they do in the army is with their rifles. They'll twirl them or whatever. And so I thought that was just the coolest thing. And I'm like, how do you teach a dog? I mean, I'm sure it's not easy to teach a dog like that, but I'm sure you can teach like a real life dog something similar. And then they put up the American flag too. Yeah. They're patriots. They're patriots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're great dogs and they have like a lot of cool talents about them. They all have really interesting names. They only mention, I think, three of their names in the episode. And but, they only talk about it once. Right. So all of their names are Bling Bling, Jingle, Maze, Flax, 14 Carat, and Knox. How did they get these names? I think that they're all like puns or jokes about them being gold as in like golden retrievers. Because they are golden retriever puppies. Okay. And they're just like playing up the gold part. Which is cool with this episode that they're at Fort Knox. Fighting a gold monster. One of the puppies' names is Knox. So maybe it's really his land. (laughs) Again, we will talk about that in a few moments. (laughs) So then they start talking about the man who is the puppy's handler. Oh, what was his name? Sergeant Payne? Was that his name? I think so. Drill Sergeant Payne. Okay. Yes. And he is the most army man on the base, to the buzz of his buzz cut, to the shine on his shiny shoes. That's what the general describes him as to the gang. He's a tough guy. He runs the drills with the dogs. Seems like, you know, the typical kind of character you would see in this kind of episode. I wasn't really surprised to see him. No. I'm surprised I didn't suspect him as a villain. No, and we said that afterwards, because the way that he's spoken about... Definitely villain material. Mm Mm-hmm. Because they're just always the most non-suspicious character. And, you know, this character has given you no reason at all to think he's the villain, which means he's the villain. Yeah. You know, because there's other characters later on that do have motive to be the gold monster, but you... They wouldn't do it. They're just misdirects. Anyway, um, the general tells Shaggy and Scooby after they're complaining about being hungry that they can go into the cafeteria, which is around the corner of the green building on the right or something like that. I think they go, it's the green building around the corner. Yes. So Scooby and Shaggy go to look, and there's like 10 green buildings. All the way down. Every building is green. (laughs) So they're just like, uh, which one? And Shaggy's just like, I guess the greenest one. (laughs) (laughs) So they walk in. And uh, there's a hand sensor there. And so they go, oh, look, Scooby. It's a high-tech hand washer. You know, like what you said, it's like a hand scanner. You put your hand on it, and it gives you the access into the room. For one, how do you think that this is going to wash your hand? Well, and second, you even questioned it, is when did they get their hands scanned? Scanned to do this, yeah. Yeah. They just put their hands on it, and it gives them access. It's like, okay, that almost access pass sure has a lot of access. And it got them as far as the gold level. Well, what happens is they go into the elevator, and there is a button that explicitly just says, gold room. Well, and they say, well, that must be where the generals eat. Why? Shaggy has no real logic in this series, no, from what I can tell. No, he just goes with it. He goes with the flow. He guesses at everything. It's just something that I've come to realize about him in this one episode. It's making me think of other instances of him doing this kind mm-hmm. of shit in other episodes. I don't know. Maybe it's just this rendition of Shaggy. I don't know. He's just He just goes with the flow. But so we talked about how Fred just kind of goes about and does what he wants in this episode. In this case, Scooby and Shaggy did. Because when their passes wouldn't let them into the gold room, Scooby digs a hole. Into the gold room, yeah. Like, there's a reason your pass won't let you in. 
you can't just dig a hole to get in there anyway. Scooby doesn't care. Fred doesn't care. No one cares in this entire episode. So Shaggy gets into the room with Scooby, and that's when they have their first encounter with the gold monster themselves. Mm -hmm. The gold monster goes to attack them, they freak out, and they end up accidentally pushing, like, the emergency button, and it alerts the rest of the gang and, you know, the base that, you know, something's wrong in the room. So the gold monster panics, and he disappears. The gang shows up, and, you know, they're like, what's going on? You know, yada, yada. Later on, the general allows the gang to stay on the base so they get to bunk with the secret six which is like a real honor you get to stay with the secret six puppies they're awesome dogs i know i can't stop talking about how great they are i would be so excited to spend the night with six golden retriever puppies these are characters that i want to see return when i go to comic-con i need somebody to bring six golden retriever puppies And those are going to be the secret six? And that can be the secret six. I just need them in real life. Okay. I'd just be really excited. I just love puppies. (laughs) So the puppies are tucking Scooby and Shaggy into their beds. Fairly tight. Very tight. For a moment, I thought that Scooby was, like, really into this kind of bondage kind of thing, but... He doesn't look like he's enjoying it. Doesn't look like he's enjoying it at all. But they're well tucked in. Meanwhile... Fred, Daphne, and Velma decide to go outside, and they're going to do a little bit of a snooping around, you know, trying to find a clue or two about this gold monster. That's when Fred dons his lovely disguise. Because my first question was, what the fuck is Fred wearing? Fred's disguise is basically a bunch of, like, green paint on his face. It's not, like, all over his face. It's just kind of in blotches. He's got a bunch of leaves tied up on his head. He's got a little basket, and it looks like like a bird. Yeah. Like a plastic bird just hanging out of the... the oh, you know what? It's a nest. The it's nest supposed, is supposed to, to be look a like a nest, yeah. So he's trying to be a tree? I don't know. He's not <laughs> tall enough for that. This is when we start to really see Fred as an adult kind of downgrade in intelligence <laughs> and common sense. Like, you see that in A Pup Named Scooby-Doo, but I give Fred the benefit of the doubt that he's just a kid. He's just an impressionable kid. That's just how he is. But right now, like, this is when you really start to see how big of a doofus he is. <laughs> this is when he was meant to be, like, the, you're so pretty. <laughs> yes, accurate. So what was it that he said? He's like, that I'm going to sneak oh, up he go- on the gold monster. He goes, I want to blend in so I can surprise the monster. And then Velma goes, I bet he won't even see you coming. <laughs> I forgot, because, like, everyone credits the Mystery Incorporated version of Velma as being really cutthroat and sarcastic. She's like that in What's New Scooby-Doo at times as well. Oh, yeah. I think that because What's New Scooby-Doo is, I'm not going to say it's, like, an obscure series, because it definitely isn't, but because it's not as referenced as Mystery Incorporated in terms of, like, its relevance in the Scooby-Doo franchise, people kind of overlook the characters and how Velma was written in this one, because she started to get a little bit of sarcasm in her this series oh yeah then he tackles travis knox right so travis knox is apparently a member of a family who used to own the land of fort knox i think that's what he says because he's like that's why they named it fort knox makes sense i guess but he's just like adamant that this is his land and that he should have it back and you know all this stuff and i'm thinking to myself it's like it's the military you're not what are you going bag? to do? You're not going to get it back. My question was, how did he get on the base? That's a really good question because later on, Sucrose has to like parachute into the base. Which I don't know how he got in. Well, and my question for her is, how did she get on the base too? Like this is an army base. If they see somebody <laughs> trying to parachute in, they're going to shoot you. <laughs> And they talk about how Travis Knox gets on the base all the time. Why is he not dead? Like, <laughs> or I'm, in jail. Like, because when Sue Cross does it later on for the first time, they instantly arrest her. Exactly. <laughs> like, maybe he is the rightful owner and that's why they're just giving him so much lean way. But, like, in real life, if you tried to break onto a military base, you would die. Yeah, I don't know how he's making it into this base on multiple occasions. Because, you know, you you said it yourself. The general said that he does this all the time. 
can someone just blacklist this guy? Yeah, like, like he's not allowed anywhere near this building or within 50 yards. I, I don't know. It's just really poor security that this base has. Definitely. And really backwards leniency on its policies and access giving because the gang, like I said earlier, evidently have access to every room in this place except the gold room. I'm wondering how far up the chain Mr. B is. He's just a friend of the general. Like, he's not in the military himself. Oh, no. Okay. He's just a friend. He's literally just the general's friend. That's all he's described to be. So the general is like, well, my friend's friends deserve an all-access pass. Right. Like, I'm sorry. I love you, but not all of your friends have, like, an almost all-access pass. To your house. To my house. (laughs) Like, if some of your friends even showed up to my house, I'd be like, why? This isn't going to fly. No, you can't <laughs> show up on a base like that. On this show, we've seen if you show up without a pass, they tear your car apart. Yeah. So how are these other people getting on? Because, like... No idea. That's Cause ridiculous. Because the gang had to go through x-rays and stuff. So like, next time, the gang should just sneak on the base. Because evidently, they're going to have a lot easier of a time getting in, and no one's going to say anything until Fred tackles you in his tree camouflage. And they got, like, real excited about it. They were like, oh, sir, you captured Knox, sir. We we haven't been able to catch this guy. <laughs> well, you know, Payne congratulates Fred for, you know, capturing him, and he gives him a medal. He's like, here's a medal. And then Fred says, thanks, I like medals. <laughs> <laughs> was that really necessary he's so pretty <laughs> um a few moments later there's another explosion that they're doing their tests on the base this wakes up scooby and subsequently shaggy and they think something's wrong so they try to get out of the bed so you thought it was scooby's nail because you know he's a dog he has sharp nails he cuts through the bed the bed because he's like tied super tight into the bed by the sacred six he cuts it and you're like that's not that's just his nail and i'm like i could have swore he just said it's a can opener it turns out he went to bed with a can opener and carries a can opener on him i mean only really hungry people would always have like a can opener on them just in case just in case they go outside and they encounter the gold monster again So he chases them across the base, and they end up finding this obstacle course. Well, when they run into the gold monster, they start running away, and Shaggy yells, I've never been afraid of my own face before. Right, because he sees his reflection in the monster's face. (laughs) And Scooby agrees with him and goes, yeah, scary. (laughs) Like, like, son of a bitch, you look at my face every day. You could have told me I was ugly. Right. So the rest of the gang see them being chased by the monster. They see them going through the obstacle course. And he backs them up against a brick wall. That's when the gang come in on a helicopter. And they throw down a ladder. And they get Scooby and Shaggy out of there. Fred's piloting the helicopter. Which, good for him. But at the same time, why are you piloting a helicopter on this military base? Well, and my question is... Should we be offended that Velma just saw Scooby and Shaggy exercising and went, oh, gosh, they're in trouble? That's a good point. Like, that's rude. That That was rude as hell, man. (laughs) Fuck you, Velma. (laughs) (laughs) So they land the helicopter and everyone gets out and the general and Mr. B come out and they're like, what's going on? And something I noted, I don't know if you noticed it, but the general, like, asked Fred if he did anything that damaged the helicopter. And Fred's like, no. And he's like, the general is like hugging and rubbing the helicopter. Like, it's okay. It's okay. I just thought that was really strange. I was figuring like it was his personal helicopter or something. And like, how dare you touch it? But like, who left the key in the helicopter? I theorize that the general has a romantic relationship with the helicopter. Of course, that's what you think, but. In all reality. What's that supposed to mean? (laughs) I don't know exactly what caused their attention to it, but they end up going around a corner of a building and they find Drill Sergeant Payne has been turned into gold. The one that runs the puppies. So I have two comments about this. One, that's really smart of Drill Sergeant Payne to do this because it kind of throws off the fact that he is the villain. But then that brings me to my next point, which is... How did he make this gold statue of himself when he is, in fact, the gold monster? 
So we find out later that it's a gold version of the shutdown goo. Yes. And so my assumption is that he like threw it over himself and then peeled it off himself. But I don't know if that works because then why wouldn't the other soldiers do that? Or why? Right. Because if the other soldiers can't seem to get out of the statue, they're stuck like that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There's a really weird plot hole. Maybe? Plot hole, I guess. I don't know. Unless he had a partner. Which he, they always do. They always have a partner. <laughs> so after they found pain has been frozen in gold, they go back to where the secret puppies are sleeping, and they find that they're all in bed. They weren't there earlier. I forgot to mention that when Shaggy and Scooby woke up and they used the can opener to get out of bed, the puppies were missing. Yeah. Um, but they come back and the puppies are there now. And they notice that they all have dirty paws. Fred goes, huh, there's dirt on their paws. I wonder what that means. What do you think it means, Fred? (laughs) They're puppies. (laughs) Like, it's it's just Fred and his randomness. Right. So they make a plan for the next day. Fred, Daphne, and Velma are going to look around the base some more. And they're, you know, going to see if they can find any clues there. They send Shaggy and Scooby into town with a couple of the Secret Six puppies, or was it all of them? I think it was all of them. They go into town, and they're going to see if they can get any comments or anything from some of the locals. So they were going to go to the Knox gift shop. And they were specifically asked to go talk to 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 Travis Travis, Knox. yeah. And the very first thing that Travis says to them when they enter the room is, will you sign this petition to give back Fort Knox to its rightful owners? And... Shaggy doesn't even answer. He just goes, are you Travis Knox? Very passively asks it, too. It's like, are you Travis Knox? Like. He doesn't even seem like he heard the question. No. He's just, (laughs) are you Travis Knox? Like, are you him? A few moments later, he does say he will sign it, which is nice. I don't think they ever do sign it, though. No, they don't. (laughs) But we learn from this conversation that Travis does not know that Fort Knox has gold in it. Which I. I thought that it was kind of like, if you know about Fort Knox, then you know there's, like, gold in there. That's what it's known for. Well, and he was very upset because then he implied that it was now his gold. Right. And that he loves gold. Do they find the gold at Fort Knox? I thought it was just a reserve. I it is, I thought it was yeah. just where they keep the gold. I yeah. don't think they actually mine it there. No. No? I no. Think most so. of America. That's where most of America's gold is kept. Okay. So, like, if for some reason you're super rich and you have gold bars and you keep them in your bank, your bank isn't going to keep them. They're going to send them to Fort Knox. If you ever want to pull out a whole gold bar, it's going to take a while because they have to send it from Fort Knox back to your bank and then you go and pick it up. Well, with that knowledge, then Travis does not own that gold. He has no right to that gold. No. I mean, the (laughs) government doesn't even have right to the gold, so. (laughs) But Travis, furthermore, does not have right to the gold and does not have a right to be mad about this. No, not at all. (laughs) That's what cracked me up is I was like, oh, okay, so now it's yours. It's not my gold anymore. Um, While they're in town, Fred, Daphne, and Velma, they go into this top secret military testing lab. They find the general in there and the general's like, hey, what are you kids doing in here? And Velma really inappropriately asks, we should ask you the same question. Bitch, he's the general. So my thing is, (laughs) well, and then the general even responds and says, well, I'm the general. I can go anywhere. And Daphne goes, good answer. Yeah. (laughs) But my thing was, he handed them almost all access passes. He knows what those passes open. So why would you ask? Why they're there like, when evidently I, these cards give right. them the access to the lab. If I had access to everything, you know I'd be walking around that whole place trying to figure out what I can and cannot get into. Right. But aside from that, I was just so baffled by Velma countering with, we should ask you the same question. Like, Who are, are you? You are really out of line asking him that he is the general of this sport. If you were in the army and you questioned your general like that, you'd probably get the shit beat out of you. <laughs> Probably not, but, like, you'd get some, like, you'd be reprimanded with something. Something like like that. You can't just question your general like that. While the general explains to Daphne and Velma that they've been testing this new invention called shutdown goo, which is supposed to be, like, an expandable net that, you know, freezes whatever it touches. Yeah. Fred is elsewhere in the lab playing with, um, they look like they were, like... Boots. Boots that bounce? Is that what they did? I think so. I think it was part of, like, probably, like, a super soldier thing, like, make them jump higher or something. He ends up in the ceiling, like, halfway in the ceiling, and he's just like, can we get some some Fred down goo? Is that what he said? Something like that. 
<laughs> At this point, I was just so over Fred. Because he keeps, like, feeling entitled to all of this military equipment and property. Like, exactly. Like, he flies this random helicopter. He is now playing with these boots. I was just baffled by how entitled he felt to being able to use all this stuff. Like, you are a friend of the general's friend. Like, that does not give you the right to do this. You're not anybody <laughs> important. Um... Then Fred also stole some heat vision goggles. Right, yes. He was looking, trying to find, like, footprints of the gold monster. And we were both caught off guard to see, with Velma's discovery, that the gold monster's, like, right there. Well, they didn't we, see him before. No, no, so they show the door, and he's like, oh, yeah, it leads this way. And then Velma goes, oh, it's the gold monster. And then cut scene back to the door, gold monster standing there. Like, <laughs> oh, he wasn't there two seconds ago. So back to Shaggy and Scooby and the Secret Six. They're in town. They now go to visit Gold Aid, which is the soda pop factory that we mentioned at the beginning of the episode. So they meet Sue Kroos, who is the owner of the company. She's cleaning up broken glass because there was just a small accident from the explosions that are going on at the military base. She's upset about the explosions because it's causing damage in her factory and she may have to go out of business. Which sucks, but, like, that's what we talked about earlier of you can't be that close to a military base. Yeah, it seems like there's liability on both parts. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't have built a business so close to the base, but at the same time, the base should not have allowed you to build so close, as well as the fact that they're testing these unnecessary explosions. What are these explosions, like, I really think... being warranted to do? Because it's explained to the by the general that the explosions are due to high security precautions they're taking because of the gold monster. But what are they actually doing to stop the gold monster? Are I they going to blow them up? I think that it's supposed to just, like, scare new people away. But that doesn't solve the gold monster problem. No. I don't know. Because that's what he rationalizes the tests for. Is yeah. By saying the issue is the gold monster. Well, and a base that is primarily there just to hold gold, I don't know why they would have so many bombs on deck. What are deck. you exploding? And why are you doing it? Yeah. Where are you doing it? Because we never actually see it on screen. No. We see the, the results, you know, the shaking and whatever, but we never actually see an explosion. But anyway, they basically present Travis Knox and Sue Kroos as suspects of being the gold monster. They both make sense. Scooby and Shaggy come back to the base with the puppies, and that's when the whole gang reunites and, again, gets attacked by the gold monster. So the gold monster is chasing them, and he almost touches the gang. He almost turns them into gold, and that's when 14 Carat, one of the Secret Six puppies... The best Secret Six puppy. ...sacrifices himself and becomes a gold statue. He will I'm, be remembered. He will be remembered. He was a brave puppy. So they decide to take 14 Carat with them. All right, to carry him around. The yeah. Base. Something I noticed with that cutaway, because they did like a commercial break, yeah. I'm assuming, went right after that happened... The figure of the puppy changes. Well, he was laying down. Yes. And then he was standing. And, and he then, looked happy, too. He was smiling. Yeah. And then another in another scene, he was sitting. So... Is he, like, adjustable? Are they adjustable gold statues? I don't know. It was kind of implied to me that they're just frozen. Like, they, they're, just, they're just statues. You they, can't move anymore. Yeah. You're done. It's shut down, Goo. You shut down. You cannot do anything anymore. I wonder how long you can last in there without dying. Like, of suffocation? I mean, we never see the first two victims. <gasps> That's right. So... We never see them again. It's to be assumed they died. I, yeah. So my question now is, how does the gold monster get the goop on his victims? Because, so it's shut down, Goo. Okay. Right. That, that makes sense. His costume is just latex, like, sprayed in gold or whatever. Like, it's not anything. Daphne described it as just being a suit. Like, yeah. Like, it's not, like, paint. Well, it's painted, but it's just a suit. Yeah, like, it's just a gold suit. Like, it's not anything. Mm -hmm. Um. So, does, how does he... How does he actually put the goo on yeah, people? Yeah, because you see when he touches them, it, like, slowly comes off of him and then, like, goes over the people. So it's not like he's holding the shutdown goo and, like, throws it over them. I wonder if it's kind of like a Spider-Man kind of thing where, like, you have something attached to your wrist and... You shoot it out? It shoots out. It would make sense, but then when 14 Carat 
bites him on the arm, that's when he turns into the gold statue. Right. I don't know. It's never really explained. No. So after this, we start hearing, like, alarms going around the base. It turns out Sue Kroos is parachuting into the base. We just went on a rant earlier about how this she should not been, ha- even be possible. She should have been shot. She would have been shot down. But you also raised a good question of where is she parachuting from? Yeah. Well, because if you're coming from a plane, that plane would have been warned. Like it would have said you're over. My All of my knowledge right now is coming from like the little bit that I do know about military bases. And then also when you play Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good frame of reference, but okay, go when on. When you fly over military <laughs> bases, they do warn you that, you know. And I assume it happens in real life that they say, you're over military air. You need to move or we're going to shoot you down. Like, it's real life. You can't just fly over military air like that. But at the same time, we never even see a plane. We don't see her, like, jump out of a plane. She's just parachuting. Where did you parachute from? I mean, unless she actually does live that close that she can, like, climb to the top of her building. And and just just jump off the building and into the floor, which I don't think is happening. No, I hope not. Actually, I'm pretty sure there's a couple buildings between her and the base. I thought they were, she was the last building, but I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't remember, but regardless. It can't happen. Regardless, it cannot happen. Um, But she's instantly arrested. Like we said earlier, she's instantly taken to jail because, you know, she... Just parachuted into a military base. Why hasn't this happened to Travis Knox yet? Maybe it's sexism. I don't know. Sexist. (laughs) You notice there's not one female military officer. I was going to say that and I just held it back, (laughs) but you're right. (laughs) So after this whole scene, the gang continue to look for clues and they go into the gold room. There, the secret five, as Velma dubs them now, find the hole that's being dug out of the gold room. So it's leading somewhere. It's a tunnel. They go inside. They're wondering, like, where this came from. What's it for? And the gold monster attacks. Wait, I think the gold monster chased them in there. He does. Um, But then they start walking like the gold monster isn't chasing them anymore. But then he runs over to a wall and starts punching it. So my next question is, How? The suit's not explained to be, like, a super suit. No. And we know it's just the drill sergeant, and he doesn't have, like, powers or anything like that. But he's punching this wall so hard. The wall's cracking, for one. And then it causes, like, the inside of the cave To collapse. Yeah, it collapses. There's rocks that fall, and it separates the gang. Um, Fred, Daphne, and Velma are trapped on one side that are that's further in, and Shaggy, Scooby, and the rest of the puppies are on the other side. Now, he leaves after that. Yes. Why? What was the point? He of probably everything? just assumed they died. Maybe. He killed two of his fellow officers. Yeah, I. I'm just gonna assume that he thought he di- that they died. <laughs> He's like a really bad guy. Like, we don't really think about it all that often based on the fact, like, he just touches people and turns them into gold. That's all he's doing, but honestly, he's ruthless. Like, we're assuming he straight up killed his two, the first two victims. Yes. He assumes that he killed the gang, so he dips out. And he turned a puppy into gold. But, like, not even just any puppy. This is puppies that he works with on a daily basis. Right, like, he has a relationship with them. He's been training them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He's heartless. Well, and then we find out he's guilty. He's doing what he's doing because he wants to be a businessman instead of a a military officer. So, like, just, I know quitting the military is not easy, but, like, figure it out, man. Why don't you just steal the gold? Yeah, steal some gold. I'm surprised that wasn't a plot point, like, for the villain's motive is that you're stealing gold from Fort Knox. Like... It seems like a really straightforward plan. That would have been so much better. Like, if he was stealing some gold and, like, sneaking it out through the cave to the art swindler's gang. And that evidently no one notices. Like, you're not the only person on this base that has access to this room. Yeah, and no one noticed that hole before. Right. Like, I feel like that's something that would have been noticed. Yeah. One way or another. So, after the gold monster disappears, Shaggy, Scooby, and the puppies, they formulate a plan to save Fred, Daphne, and Velma. They send the puppies through the vents in order to get into the, the cavern. And yeah. they, you know, they come in, they save the gang. 
And that's when they discover that the tunnel leads to gold aid. It opens up into this room that has a cabinet that says, like, top secret ingredients or something like that for gold aid. I like the fact that the cabinet explicitly says that. Yeah. (laughs) Because, of course, it would. It's Scooby-Doo. So that's when Velma says that she solved the mystery, because, of course, she did. And, of course, she's not going to tell us right now. So that's when they formulate their plan to capture the The gold monster. And so Fred goes, we'll need two good men. Scooby, Shaggy, you've been drafted. Like, what a fucking asshole. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Like, you're just going to... Dra- you? That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just volunteered Shaggy and Scooby. I mean, that's not, like, out of character, but the way he worded it... Was rude. You're an asshole. <laughs> So, yeah, Scooby and Shaggy are tricked into having to be bait for this plan. They find the gold monster. I don't remember exactly where he was. Was he, like, outside the gold room? Is that where he was? I think so. I thought it was odd that the gold monster really wanted the all-access pass because didn't he already have access to the room? He's been in the room before. I don't know. Because the puppies, he kept the puppies up late digging the hole. Yeah, so he must have had access somehow. Why is he so bent on getting this all-access pass that Scooby and Shaggy are pretending to have? Like, he's, like, really wanting that. Adamant, yeah. Why do you want it? You already have access to the gold room. That just didn't make sense to me. I didn't even realize that until now as we're talking about it. I did not write that note down. He chases them, and that begins the episodic, like, chase scene music that we saw kind of starting in a pup named Scooby-Doo. I like it in this series because it's relevant music for the time. And they have like all sorts of cool like rock music and different kinds of songs. And I was ready for the chase music the whole time. And I was not disappointed. Yeah, it was pretty entertaining. I remember finding a lot of songs I actually did like from this series that I still have like in my iTunes library today. (laughs) Um, Simple plan all the way. (laughs) I do want to note that they were throwing 14 carat around. Right. They give the, the fake all access pass into 14 carat's frozen mouth, and they're like throwing him like a football. Yeah. Just back and forth to everybody in the He's gang. He's still a living being, regardless of well, being in the gold statue or not. And my thing was, at first, I figured once you were turned into a gold statue, you just kind of died. Okay. Um, And so I was like, first off, they're just carrying around this dead puppy. Dead puppy. puppy. <laughs> And then they were throwing a dead puppy. <laughs> Did you really think it was going to get that dark in this series? I mean, I didn't think they were really going to think about it. I thought he was just going to be like a gold statue and they'd like keep him or whatever. You know, I don't know. Like I'm a, imagining them just carrying around this dead puppy. <laughs> you know, kind of like a Medusa thing. <laughs> That's so messed up. <laughs> I didn't think they'd mention that he was dead, but I'm sure they would like play it off like something fun, like, oh, we're gonna keep 14 carat here on the prize oh table. Like, God. I don't know. So that was my first thought was like, you're just fucking throwing around this dead puppy. <laughs> we now know that he's a living <laughs> being. <laughs> okay, move on. <laughs> so now we know he's a living being. Right. And um so they're just throwing around this, like, this helpless puppy. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so finally, the gold monster gets his hands on the pass. Turns out the pass is a net. The net, like, expands out of the card and captures him. So I want, my note on that was, it was a really cool trap. Yeah. But how? It must have been in, like, the top secret lab that they're constantly stealing stuff from. Well, and I thought at first it was going to be like shutdown glue. Like yeah. that's like we got to actually see how it's supposed to work. But then like he peels off the trap rather easily. Did he? The gold monster? Yeah, he like pulls it over his head and it's like all good in the hood. Oh, well, I mean, he's on a military base. He's not going to get anywhere at this point. No, and I mean, he doesn't really try to. He just pulls it like, oh, this is uncomfortable. I'm going to take it off my head and then sit here because I know I'm screwed. Right. So like we've said Earlier, it does turn out to be Drill Sergeant Payne. He wants to leave the military to become a businessman. What he was basically trying to do was use the explosions to drive the local businesses out of business. He specifically wanted to drive Gold Aid out of business. Which he was succeeding. Yes. So he was training the Secret Six to dig the tunnel. 
the tunnel would get him access to where the secret formula was so that when Sue Kroos was forced to sell the company, he would already have the top secret formula and then he would just, I guess, either take over Gold Aid or start his own version of Gold Aid. Mm -hmm. Really simple plan. I feel like he could have just been more well off by just stealing the gold. Because, again, evidently there's no surveillance of this room because no one saw this tunnel being dug inside the gold room. Yeah. But he reassures the gang that the puppy, uh, 14 Carat, is fine. They peel away the goo, and he's perfectly fine. My next question, real quick. Yes. Why did no one else try that before? If they knew about the shutdown goo, why would they not try to peel it off everybody else? Like, you mean during the episode yeah. or, like, right now? Like, no, like, during the, the episode. Instance. Like, the second those two soldiers got, you know, whatever, they, I assume, took them to the medical to, like, see if there was anything they could do. I'm going to assume that the goo, like, freezes once it's, like, in place. And unless you actually, like, really try to take it off, it just feels metallic or okay. feels like a solid. I'm going to assume that's how it works. You hope so. Yeah. <laughs> And the episode basically finishes with the Secret Six receiving medals. They say good, good boys, boy. and, good boys, and good girls. I thought it was really cute. And Scooby leads them into a little march as well. I thought that was really cute. I thought it was a fun episode in general. I liked it. Yeah. Um, so, what did you rate this episode on the Scooby Snackometer? Yeah, I gave it a seven. How come? I really liked the monster, actually. Okay. I think the monster really made me like this episode a lot, just because, like, what I was saying at the beginning of the episode when describing him, he's really simple by design, but he's really menacing in terms of his actions. He's ruthless. He's evidently really strong. It's not really explained why he's strong, but he is. Yeah. He's demonstrated strength. And he literally turns you into gold just by touching you. He's a threat. Aside from that, I like the fact that the Secret Six have come back. It establishes continuity in this series, which, you know, it doesn't need to be, like, overwhelming continuity in order to make this, like, a Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated kind of series. It's just really subtle things that add to the world building of this series. The characters were funny. The mystery wasn't all too convoluted. Um... Very minimal plot points, too. Something I like about What's New Scooby-Doo is the plot holes are minimal, if non-existent. Yeah. So what did you give it on your Scooby snack meter I gave it an 8. Okay. Um, Similar to yours, I did really like the monster. There were a lot of times that we had to pause because, specifically me, but also you, were laughing so hard. Mm-hmm. There's some funny moments in this episode. And it was, you know, it was good moments. They had good comedy timing like it was just a good episode i agree so with that our official scooby snack meter rating is a 7.5 for gold paw Woohoo! yay another set of notes i actually had in my notebook for this episode was fred's shenanigans that he got down to on the military base he got away with his obnoxious disguise he pilots a helicopter he puts on those bouncy boots. He steals the heat vision goggles. And he also, during the chase scene, we didn't mention this. At one point, the gold monster's like chasing Scooby and Shaggy, and they get saved by Fred, who's flying with a jetpack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Almost all access pass. <laughs> I'm still sticking by my seven, though. <laughs> So, are you ready for a fun fact this week, Shannon? I am. Well, I pointed it out to you when we were actually watching the episode, which actually has to do with the intro to What's New Scooby-Doo. So, when you're watching the intro, I really encourage our listeners to at least check out the intro on YouTube. You'll see the error. There will be moments in the intro where three stripes that match the mystery machine appear, and it shows silhouettes of the gang running. So I think it's like the third instance of this where they forgot to include Fred in the gang lineup. So it just shows Daphne, Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby's silhouettes running and not Fred. Even though his silhouette appears with the rest in every other instance of the intro. Which weirds me out because we've had the conversation where they reuse... This kind of animation. Yeah. Yeah. And so like the fact that they had to specifically draw this again 
and missed Fred. Like, they could have just taken that picture and moved it to the other area. Right. I don't know. The newer that these series become as we're watching them, I feel like there should be less and less errors. Yeah. So, you know, as we move forward, there'll be even less, but that's just a really small thing. It's not, like, a big nitpick of mine. Like, I, I'm not mad about it. It's just something I thought was kind of interesting with this series. So that's the fun fact for this week. I don't have any Scooby news for you guys, unfortunately. So for next week's episode, we're not actually going to randomize. We are watching this next series in order. It is Shaggy and Scooby-Doo Get a Clue. I believe a majority of these episodes aren't like intensely continuity like focused, but there is like a beginning and end arc. So I did opt for us to watch this in order. So our first episode for Shaggy and Scooby-Doo Get a Clue is Shags to Riches. Here is the premise for you guys on this episode from Scoobypedia. Shaggy's uncle disappears, leaving him all his money and his estate. While exploring, Shaggy and Scooby find a message from Uncle Albert, explaining that he went into hiding because someone is after his latest invention. Now Shaggy and Scooby must solve this mystery before it's too late. Dun dun dun. Now, have you ever seen an episode from this series? I haven't. And when we were watching Gold Paw, they showed the... It was like a trailer for trailer like volume for it. one of it. I think I'm going to hate it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is it because of the animation? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the animation is definitely not a favorite among a lot of Scooby fans. This is one of the black sheep yep. of the franchise. It's definitely one of the least talked about, I feel like. I will say, at first, with be cool scooby-doo i thought i was gonna hate it because of the animation and that has turned into i'm not gonna say one of my favorites but i do like the show Mm -hmm. so and it's actually usually the main argument people throw at that show is the fact that the animation's not their favorite yeah but the quality of the show is pretty awesome yeah so i might change my mind after the first or third episode we'll see we'll be sharing some updates about that episode as the week goes on you can follow us on Twitter at Groovy Scoobcast, or you can email us directly with any comments or questions about Gold Paw or Shags to Riches at thatgroovyscoobcast at gmail.com. I also run Do Central, which is a Tumblr blog and Instagram page where I share all sorts of Scooby Doo news and parts of my Scooby Doo collection. Both of those are at Do Central. And with that, we hope you enjoyed that Groovy Scoobcast. Come back next week for a Scooby Snack filled time. Bye, guys. Bye.